Namaste. The supreme accomplishment is to realize the meaning of the horse sacrifice, the Ashvamedha, because this is the ultimate cosmic meditation. You know, when people talk about meditation, there are many different meanings. But the ultimate meaning, the ultimate meditation, that which leads to complete self-realization, is encoded in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. I have realized this, and I want to share it, because this is the end of my stay in the goddess temple. Next few days, I'm going to India, and I'm going to be moving around, going to wild places up in the mountains and all, you know, you know how I am. <laughs> but what I have realized is so powerful and so important. It's like the acme, the summit, the, the ultimate meditation. There can't be anything beyond this. Why is that? Because, like Sri Ishupanishad says, one has to realize both avidya and vidya, both knowledge and ignorance. Ignorance is that which leads to rebirth. It's not ignorance in the common sense of the term, but the ultimate ignorance of the universal God, realization of the universe as oneself. Now, think of this in the beginning from a practical standpoint. This body, this empirical self, this individual could not exist without the existence of the whole universe. The whole universe is like the body of which this individual self is one cell. And, you know, as above, so below. As is true of the universal body, which is the, the eater, the doer, ultimately prana. So below the human body, the individual body, is a heat machine based on prana. And prana is like space. It's one. There's no difference between the prana, the living force, the vital force in a human body, and that in any other body, including the universal body itself. This is the meaning of all religious iconography. Whether we use as a symbol Vishnu or Shiva or Devi, or any other form of God. The ultimate meaning is the universal self, the prana sharira, the eater, huh? the knower, universal form, virat, hiranyagarbha, the golden egg, Lord Brahma, See, or in my case, in my personal symbol, the lion. The lion is the eater. The peak hunter. The top of the food chain. 
He's the killer, death. And Hiranyagarbha is also described as death. Shiva appears in the guise of a hunter. What is a hunter? A hunter is a killer of death, of animals. So this, like prana, this space is the same everywhere. Everywhere that is a, a where, a place, is the same. You cannot tell the difference between space inside the pot or inside the body and outside the body. You cannot tell the difference between the space in Jagrat consciousness, Swapna consciousness, or Sushupti. Space is always space. It's big, it's empty, it's frictionless, it's a location, huh? like a container where stuff can exist and things can happen. It's early in the morning, I have to wake up. <laughs> So, in the same way, the prana is always the same. Prana is air and fire. Pranayama means regulation of the breath, breathing exercise. Why? We made the comparison in a recent video that fire requires air or oxygen. And when you blow on a fire, it makes it blaze up, isn't it? So the breathing, the movement of air in the body is what creates movement. Huh? The body is a pneumatic machine. It moves by air pressure. Notice when you go to lift something, you take a breath. <sighs> And then you lift. Huh? It gives strength. It creates movement. The pressure, the pneumatic pressure, the air pressure. And also, if you want to wake up, huh? you take some deep breaths. <sighs> or if you're exercising, if you're walking or running, riding a bicycle, you have to breathe regularly or it puts too much strain on the body, too much strain on the heart. What are we doing? We're blowing on the fire, the fire of digestion, Vaishvanara. In another Upanishad, the Vaishvanara is described as the source of the ringing in the ears when you stop your ears. I think it's in Mundaka Upanishad. And when that ringing stops, it means the fire of digestion is going out and death is coming. Because without digestion, we have no energy. We can't maintain the body. So what happens at the time of death is that the individual prana leaves the body. And if there is still the desire for individual existence, it goes to another body and grows that body in the womb, takes birth, and so on. But in the case of an enlightened person, the individual prana merges with the universal prana and the individual disappears and does not take birth again. This is realization of conditioned Brahman because it's still within the universe. It's still within the world of Shiva or Devi or Hiranyagarbha or Vishnu or whatever symbol you use, whatever name and form you use, 
as a symbol to focus on or to reach that universal self. The symbol is irrelevant. Huh? <laughs> it, the meaning of the symbol is the same in all circumstances, whether Shiva, Devi, Vishnu, Brahma, or whatever, uh, the lion god, you know, whatever. The meaning is the same. It's that ultimate joy of the little self, uh, the drop merging with the great self, the ocean. The water of the drop and the water of the ocean are the same quality. Similarly, the prana of the individual self and the universal self is exactly the same. You can't tell any difference. Life is life. So this is the first stage. This is realization of avidya, ignorance. Why is that? Because even the existence of the universe has to come to an end. Even the life of Lord Brahma has to come to an end. Hiranyagarbha, Virat, whatever you want to call it, is still only temporary. It's very long, the longest, because he is the first being. But then that universal life is offered into the Ark of Fire. What is the Ark of Fire? The fire of Brahman, the universal consciousness. See, consciousness like prana, like space is always the same everywhere. Brahman is the root substance of everything. Pure consciousness, consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. Brahman is aware of only of itself. So when this individual consciousness is offered into the supreme consciousness, when the conditioned Brahman is realized, first of all, then offered into the supreme Brahman, unconditioned Brahman, this is the ultimate sacrifice. And this is the meaning of the horse sacrifice. The horse represents the universal being, Bra conditioned Brahman, Hiranyagarbha, or whatever you know, symbol we want to use, the horse or the lion or whatever, is offered into the fire of the consciousness of the Supreme Brahma. This is the ultimate sacrifice. This is the ultimate realization. This is the, the end of material existence. And this is also the ultimate meditation. So this is what I have realized, and this is going to be my practice from now on. I very strongly urge you to download the PDF or the um, liquid text project of Brihadaranyakopanishad linked in the comments are known, not the comment, the description of every single video in the series. And go through it on your own. We have to go very slow, you know, to explain everything in all the videos. And we're going to be continuing the series. At least that's my intention. But I have to move. I have to go, I think, back to India. I'm being called. And so the final uh, stage of my life is going to be there, the last few years, in a sacred place. And, you know, when once I'm settled there, 
I'm going to be back online and making videos. <clears throat> but until then, I have to take a break. It's Jupiter retrograde and Saturn retrograde, both at the same time. So this is a time for a deep introspection. This is a time for uh, getting your internal functioning aligned with the cosmos. This is a time for hooking up your individual realization with the cosmic flow. This is the best time for any kind of meditation. So do yourself a favor. Take these suggestions to heart and use this special time, this rare time. It hardly ever happens that Jupiter and Saturn are retro at the same time. It's going to be until the middle of December. So take advantage of this time to realize this very important, ultimately important cosmic truth and experience it for yourself and get the realization, get the result of the esoteric teaching of Brihadaranyakopanishad. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>